Okay, well, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Mark Werner. I'm the TechStop project manager on this project. And uh, what we're going to do tonight is kind of just fill you in on the work that's been going on prior to this, uh, uh, to where we are right now, and kind of lay out what, uh, what the, some of the alternatives are that we've come up with for this project. So. Okay, just going to give you a little back background. Um, first off, why, why are we studying uh, this quarter? Um, congestion is, is uh, I know it's not a, a big deal, as big a deal down in here in the valley, as it up in uh, between Austin and San Antonio, but uh, congestion is going to become a problem. There's a thousand people a day moving to Texas. We need another, other means to, to move people around, to move them around efficiently. And we're looking at, looking at this quarter to see if maybe passenger rail service might be good for that, uh, for that, and if so, what type of service would, would fit best in the quarter, and to use this as kind of a study for feasibility for future rail improvements in the corridor. Uh, these are uh, things what this uh, study is looking at. Uh, it's looking at, um, is passenger a good idea for this quarter? And so, what type of passenger service? What are gonna be the benefits to passenger rail service to the people living in, 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 in the corridor? And then looking at what cities would be served. What, we're, what the study is not doing, because it's a planning level study, not a project level study, it's a high level study, um, we're not looking at, you know, when will this new line be constructed? Because like I say, this is a planning study that would have to be, the, uh, the second phase would look into that. Um, we're not looking at what specific properties would be affected because we're not determining the exact alignment. We have a general idea of where the rail line would go, but we don't have an exact alignment. We don't know when this would be built. Because um, actually, after getting this, you'd have to go through the project level, and then you'd have to actually get the money to actually construct the project. And then, um, like I said, we're not determining where the exact location of the stations in the cities would be. We're just determining which cities uh, would, would best be served by the service. These are the, uh, the types of service that we're looking at. Looking at conventional uh, passenger rail service, Amtrak type service, speeds up to like 90 miles an hour. Uh, stations about 60 miles apart. Uh, also looking at higher speed, which is up to uh, 125 miles an hour, so you'd use some existing rails, but also some dedicated tracks. Um, and then also looking at true high speed, which would be a fully a dedicated grade separated uh, uh, tracks. And those would have a, a more frequent trains and the, your station distance would be farther apart. Okay, this is where we are right now. Um, first part of the study, we are looking at the, developing the, the screen of alternatives. We went through and analyzed and selected some of those to bring in uh, to bring forward and to present to you tonight. And this is kind of the process that we went through. We had a wide range of different alternatives, different routes we were looking at, highways, other rail lines. Uh, we screened out the ones that weren't physically possible to build or there was problems with the, with the existing uh, rail lines or, or impacts to the highways. So we narrowed it down to a range of feasibilities that we're uh, gonna be presenting that will be moved forward into the environmental uh, uh, process. Now the boards uh, around the room here, we've tried to, we've had come up with some uh, uh, selection criteria and we've kind of highlighted those uh, and for the different uh, routes, like green would be a good, uh, the criteria fits it well, yellow is kind of a medium, and then red, there's, there, there's some problems, just kind of give you a visual of what the, uh, how, those, how those fit in. These are some of the criteria we looked at. Um, looked at the uh, uh, cost revenue ratio, we're looking at how much of a subsidy would a particular service need. Um, we had developed some minimal thresholds for those, for those criteria. We also looked at travel times, how they compare to the auto, and then uh, we looked at what, how many people would choose to reuse this uh, if it was available. Uh, we looked at capital costs, the passenger rail uh, cost per mile, and then of course the right of way, since we're, just, it's, we're not determining the exact alignment, the uh, impact, right of way impacts are just whether we're gonna be on existing freight lines, or if it would be a new, uh, a new alignment. These are just some of the other uh, uh, screen we looked at, uh, natural resources, uh, cultural resources, archaeological sites, and then social resources. We'll get private farmland receptors and then uh, environmental justice populations. Now we'll get into the alternatives. We'll go through the, uh, uh, the northern ones. I'll kind of go through theirs fairly quickly because I think you guys are probably more interested in the southern routes. But, Anyway, these are uh, a two, they look, uh, look very similar. They use a, a different, uh, it's gonna use existing freight lines uh, down from Oklahoma City, down to Fort Worth. Um, we jump from, uh, from the uh, BNSF line, it follows the UP down 
to buoy and then on the MB2, it jumps onto the uh, BNSF line at buoy down into Fort Worth and we'd use the uh, TRE rail line as the connection across to uh, uh, Dallas. And then the, we'd also make a connection to the uh, DFW airport and to the uh, entertainment districts in Arlington. This is uh, another route we looked at. This is a, uh, a would be a, a greenfield, which is a new, a new alignment, roughly a parallel on I-35 uh, down uh, from to and then connect into Dallas, and then use a route um, suggested by the uh, uh, Metroplex area that uh, have a connection between Dallas and Fort Worth uh, running down the median of I-35 for a high-speed connection. Uh, okay, here's a uh, couple more. Um, these uh, uh, N, uh, 4A and 4B both use existing rail lines. Um, one of them connect, uh, um, this is basically the Heartland Fire route, uh, connect into Fort Worth, and then there would be another one with the connection into Dallas. Um, and then uh, 4C would use the uh, a connection to Dallas using the KCS line. Another thing that we initially looked at, uh, we were looking at the routes to connect uh, um, Dallas Fort Worth to the uh, San Antonio. We had looked at a at a loop uh, connection that would go. The trains would come up to Hillsboro, split, go to Fort Worth, and go to Dallas, and then come back down, and then have, actually have trains running opposite directions either hour. Um, but we dropped this route because of the, uh, uh, I don't know if people are familiar with Tower 55, but it's, it's a major rail intersection in downtown Fort Worth. There's 100 trains a day go through there. Until that problem is fixed, this, that alternative really uh, didn't, didn't work. So. so these are the ones in the central section that we looked at. Uh, this is basically what the route that the Texas Eagle follows from uh, Fort Worth down to Taylor. And then on the, uh, down to Taylor, we had a couple options. One would be to follow the route from Taylor to San Antonio, which is uh, going to be developed by the Lone Star Rail District as a, as a passenger service, and then the other one would be a new alignment, roughly following I-30, make a stop at the uh, uh, San Antonio, I mean uh, Austin Airport, and then down in San Antonio. Okay, here's a couple more routes um, using a, a different freight line down the Temple, uh, and then one one coming in from Dallas, using the uh, uh, same configuration down in the Taylor. These are two of uh, the uh, new, uh, uh, new uh, right-of-way alignments we're looking at. Uh, one start this 4A starts with a new line just south of Dallas, and then uh, down to Taylor with the uh, um, connection using the uh, Lone Star Rail District to make the uh, the connection into Austin with a stop at the uh, Austin Airport. And uh, uh, 4B was the uh, alignment suggested by the uh, Metroplex area. Uh, they'd like to have seen a line coming down from the Entertainment District in Arlington down to make some connection in San Antonio. Okay, now in the southern section, these are the alternatives that we were looking at. Uh, this is the existing uh, UP line from San Antonio down to Laredo. It'll be on existing lines. Oops, too far. Uh, C4 is a, uh, is a, a new alignment uh, that we're looking at, would basically parallel the existing freight lines and then use the old abandoned uh, uh, rail corridor that runs down from Beeville down to McAllen that's roughly the, the, uh, what are the 281 runs to make the connection down into uh, McAllen. Then we'd have a connection uh, over to Laredo and then a connection to Corpus Christi. And then to make the uh, connection in uh, McAllen down over to uh, Brownsville, we were we counted on the uh, development of the, uh, the commuter rail service they're looking at here. And then you could also have a connection from McAllen into Monterey. Uh, S5 is a route using a, be the conventional uh, speeds running down using existing uh, freight lines down to, uh, to Harlingen. Okay, in S6, this is a, uh, uh, another uh, a new alignment they were looking at um, <clears throat> with a connection uh, going down to Laredo would go through the Camino Columbia crossing and then uh, connect to Monterey that way. Uh, when we first started this study, we, the study was just to go down to the valley. We had, weren't looking at going into Mexico, but we heard from the people who live in this area that, hey, you really need to go make a connection to Monterey and, and into Mexico. And this particular route, um, there's already environmental clearance for a line running up from Monterey to the crossing at Camino Columbia, so we, so we included this in, the, in, in the, one of the options. So, so what we need to hear from you is, are these the right alternatives? Have we missed something? Uh, do you have some concerns about any of these? Um, or do you need any more information? And uh, we have some comment forms that we'd like you to fill out. You can also access this information online. There's the, uh, the address right there. And um, 
I was just hearing any questions. <laughs>